Hello everyone. Uh, in this uh, video, we're going to demonstrate how we are going to use uh, Gauss quadrature numerical integration method uh, to uh, create the um, element surface matrix for a beam. Uh, the same procedure actually is going to be uh, uh, going to be used for any other element, uh, 1D, 2D, or even 3D elements. Uh, however, uh, I wanted to demonstrate it using uh, a simple example, which is uh, a beam. Uh, okay, here is the program, uh, just like the one we saw uh, for um, uh, a beam. Uh, number of elements the length of the element, the width and the thickness are all in meters. So this is one meter, two centimeters and one millimeter. The modulus of elasticity is uh, uh, 71 gigapascal, which is the stiffness of aluminum. Uh, then we calculate the, the cross-section area and the second moment of area, pH cubed over 12. Uh, finally, here we get the length of the element uh, LE total length over the number of elements. Then the step where we need to calculate the uh, uh, element stiffness matrix, we're going to go to uh, a, um, uh, another function called uh, calc uh, linear. It, uh, it's supposed to calculate all the linear elements for a beam. For uh, the demo purposes, I created one that just calculates the uh, stiffness matrix, uh, the bending stiffness matrix. So let's open that uh, function. Uh, open selection. Uh, here you can see that uh, uh, this function just needs the length of uh, the beam, uh, sorry, the length of the element. Uh, then uh, it goes through the numerical integration. However, at the beginning, I defined uh, what is called the Gauss constants, the uh, location of the uh, integration points and uh, the uh, corresponding weighing values. Uh, I'm not going to go through where these constants came from. You can just Google Gauss constants, uh, Gauss uh, numerical integration. Uh, I've already added a link uh, for that and see how these constants were calculated. Anyway, uh, uh, here I'm using eight integration points. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, three would have been sufficient for a beam. Uh, and you, uh, I also will uh, provide you with uh, a text file that contains all the constants for uh, one, three, five, uh, up to 13, integration points uh, using Gauss quadrature. Anyway, here we use the Gauss constants in the first, uh, in the, sorry, the, this is the second row. I'm going to uh, have what's called the Gauss integration points. And uh, in the first uh, row, we're going to have the uh, weighing, different weighings for each of these um, points. Anyway, now we start the numerical integration procedure. So I'm going to integrate eight points. Here you are, x, i's, one to eight. Uh, calculating the physical coordinate. Since it's eight of them, there are eight of them. So uh, the length uh, x, uh, uh, this is the length of the element, is going to be multiplied by uh, the Gauss location. Remember, the Gauss location is at the second is put on the second uh, row, uh, plus one, multiplied by the total length. This will give you the uh, physical coordinate, the physical position of the point X. Now you have X, so let's get the second derivative of H. Remember, H uh, matrix, uh, H, uh, XX, uh, is needed for the integration of the uh, bending stiffness matrix. So uh, just to call HWXX, uh, here you are, you'll find the function, uh, uh, here I put it in a very simple uh, form, just the second derivative as obtained from Mathematica, or uh, you can do it, of course, um, by hand. You'll get 0, 0, uh, 2, and 6 times X. Uh, okay, now you have uh, the H uh, row vector. 
uh, you multiply uh, its transpose, which is going to be a column vector, four uh, dimensional column vector times uh, four uh, dimensional row vector, the same vector. So here you get H transpose H. Uh, when you uh, get this matrix, it's one of the matrices you will calculate. You're going to calculate eight of them. Uh, added to the original one, first we initiated it by zeros here in this uh, line, added to it, multiplied by the Gauss uh, way, uh, weight uh, here uh, as we saw them in the first row. So uh, you multiply the weight by this uh, product and put it into the uh, uh, bending stiffness matrix. Uh, this will be done eight times. By the end of this loop, you should multiply by the Jacobian. Uh, the Jacobian is an expression borrowed from a numerical integration. Uh, I, uh, you don't have, uh, we don't have to get into the details of it right now, but for uh, this problem, for our one-dimensional problem, the Jacobian is a constant and it's equal to half the length of the element. So at this point, by the end of this function, you have KB, which is the numerical integration of HXX transpose times HXX. Uh, now we still have a lot uh, to do. Where is the TB inverse, TB inverse transpose, and where are the modulus of elasticity and the second moment of area? So let's get back to the uh, beam static uh, function or the main program. Here you are, you calculate uh, TB and invert it. Uh, again, I'm going to use the same way. I'm not just going to put TB there. Uh, let's uh, see how we get it uh, open here. Uh, as we did in the Mathematica program, we're going to evaluate the first uh, row, the second row, the third row, and the fourth row by using H, uh, HW and HWX at zero and at the length of uh, the element or the end point. Then we're going to put those T's uh, in, uh, into a single matrix, which we're going to call TB or the transformation matrix for bending. What's there in HW and HWX? It's just like HWXX, which we've seen before. Here you are, HW is just one X, X squared and X cubed. And uh, HWX is the derivative of that, zero, one, two X and three X squared. Uh, then you return to the main uh, program with uh, TB. Uh, then calculate the inverse. Here you are, the inverse transpose times the, uh, the matrix that you got from the linear calculation multiplied by the modulus of elasticity and the second moment of area. Uh, well, let me admit something here. This is too much for a beam element, okay? This is too much for a beam element. It's overkilling. However, uh, I intentionally am using this elaborate procedure uh, because this is exactly the same procedure that we're going to use if we are going to model a plate, uh, which is a two-dimensional uh, structure, or we are going to uh, model the, uh, say, the acoustic uh, acoustic waves in a three-dimensional uh, cube model uh, or whatever, uh, I'm going to follow the same procedure, just uh, starting with the first building block which is the HW, then creating another function for the first derivative, and if needed, a third function for the second derivative, then uh, there will be a function for calculating the inverse, uh, the, sorry, the transformation matrix, and then we're going to use its inverse. Uh, then uh, uh, we're going to uh, uh, create the uh, element uh, matrix equation, uh, element equation matrices using the numerical integration here. We can add any number of uh, uh, matrices uh, below this, maybe the mass matrix, maybe the geometric stiffness matrix, or whatever, depending on the problem you're going to be solving. 
then uh, we are going to uh, follow the same loop. Even for 2D, it will be two uh, loops, one for X and one for Y, for 3D, one for X, one for Y, and one for Z, and so on. Uh, finally, uh, you get the element stiffness matrix, and that's it. Following this step, you're going to get back to what you used to do when the stiffness matrix was calculated in closed form. They just assemble, apply boundary conditions, create uh, the force vector, and uh, solve uh, the problem. And just to demonstrate, here you are uh, running this program. We are going to get the same number like we did in the closed form. Here the maximum deflection is 1.0. That's the maximum deflection we got uh, for uh, the cantilever beam.